portion of a conversation. Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to share a portion of a conversation that we had with Paul. Uh, Paul's been super busy, as you guys can imagine, uh, managing a massive community. And uh, so we, we had the fortunate opportunity of grabbing some sound bites from him. And so we're going to share that with you guys this evening. And uh, we're going to just go ahead and jump into that. And we'll come back and open up the floor for questions. Right. So for the developers, what they're going to do starting from now is they're going to start to lead because they found that the community still, you know, what still want to focus on the center. It's pretty impossible for to may, maybe it's the Chinese culture. They are not sure yet, but it's, it's even though they want to be everything to be decentralized, but you know, people still want to go on calls and still want to believe in a in a in a particular person and follow their lead so starting from yesterday so i did a i did a ma to the chinese um the the the, the day before just telling them that okay starting from yesterday they have they are forming a fund and it's gonna be pangea capital Okay, so in the future, they will be researching on projects. They will be, you know, deciding whether this project is good or bad. And they will tell people, tell the group that, okay, this is the, the one that we support. We are running it or we are funding it, uh, which will be safe. And people can decide whether they want to participate or not, at least with all these projects that we've seen on OSK swap and this swap, you know, there are a lot of leaders that starting their own pro projects, but they are very, they are, they are very unexperienced in, I'm not sure if you guys know, there are like bots, right? They will be waiting for these new projects to launch and they will, these bots can always buy at the, lowest price once the project once the liquidity pool is formed they will buy at the lowest price and and then wait until people start coming in and they will start selling because they have the lowest price right so they they can earn a lot of money and that's what we've seen with fist swap and always case swap with these leaders bringing you know did an IDO and very successful IDO in the current crypto market, but that also attracted a lot of bots that want to take advantage, you know, during the launch. So, and because of that, you know, once they earn their OSK office, these bots, they will, they will exchange into USDT. So every new project came in is eating out our USDT pool. So, you know, maybe for the community leaders, they, it's not their first intention, but the way the, because they are, they are, they are very newbie at it. <laughs> so it's something that they cannot control, but this is crypto. It's something that we have, we have seen a lot last year. Not in Pangu, but in, in other DeFi or, or GameFi projects. That's why there's always, you know, they're finding ways like blacklist to, to prevent this kind of thing. Or there are several ways to killing to kill the spots, to kill these bots. Okay, so so what I've told the, the group is that, you know, last year is everybody is so protected. Nobody understands what is the real world in crypto. Now, in the last three months, they have, they are revealing themselves into the real crypto. And that's what we see in crypto every day. <laughs> it's normal for us, but it's not normal for most of the Pangu people because they've been so protected, right? And most people, even though they are in crypto, but they don't understand what is the real crypto. And seeing what we are seeing for the past few days, you know, th this is the crypto world. This is what, what we are very used to. 
in, in, in crypto. But, you know, people lose faith. People are, are you know, there are a, a lot of uncer uncertainty because they, they, they don't have the knowledge and they get affected by the price, which is fine. It's normal, right? So that is why for the developers, you know, the way to turn everything around is they are in the future, they're going to start to leave. They're going to make, you know, they're going to bring on projects, bring on funds outside of Pangu, you know, people outside of Pangu into these projects. And because all the IDOs will be using FIST, OSK, and Fong, so when people start making money with different projects, then they will understand, you know, that's what we are trying to do. Because right now, um, well, actually, uh, it's the same, you know, everywhere. People just want to see the price go up. <laughs> So that, that's what the developer is going to do starting from now to make the price go up. But we only announced it. Okay, so these announcements were supposed to be made on August, right? But because of, you know, the, 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 the little drop that we had uh, two or three days ago, so we decided to announce it earlier, okay? So the public chain has done, the coding, everything is done. Um, first of October is when we're gonna be on testnet where everybody can start testing it, and then before Christmas, it's, it will be officially launched. And because of that, that's why uh, we turn off the farming for farm. So, and the, all the rest of the farm that's not farm is going going to be in the black hole, right? Because people only farm and then sell. So, um, so the part where where, where we have to understand is that developers are, they have a big burden because they have to pull the price of three tokens at the same time. Where most of the project, they only have to focus on one token, right? And right now in this community, you know, there are people who love this, there are people who love OSK, and there are people who love Fun. And we cannot ignore any single token. You know, it has to be three that's the most valuable or most important. And that's what they're gonna start to build, to build on these three tokens, right? So um, they're gonna reveal more details in the future, in, in, in the next next few days uh, on how this investment fund or this Pangea Capital gonna work. They're gonna give out reports on everything, all the details, like monthly reports. They're gonna make sure that this fund can make money because when they have money, that that like what they did with the fund, where all 15% of the fund that, that goes to in, into their wallet are used to buy back this, buy back OSK or create liquidity pool, and then everything is sent into the black hole. Right. So they're gonna make sure that this fund will start will keep on making money so they can empower um the use case or, you know, burning of this OS Canon font. And also the PG NFTs. So it's the burden that have left from the last year where the developers has to find ways to make sure that the price can go up, right? And it will need some time and it will need a very, a few good projects uh, launch a few good project like to bring everything back because right now as you can see for from the trading volume there are a lot of people there are a lot of eyes on the swap and OSK swap you know there are traders that you know love love this place keep on trading right so we are getting a lot of attention but we are we need one two three good projects and then leading people to be focused. You know, they, they don't, they, okay, so uh, for the community, th that's what I told everybody. For the people who are willing to learn, understand, participate in the new projects, follow Pangea Capital. In the future, they will have their own Twitter. They will announce, like, what are the good projects as it's, you know, it's, it's worth to give it a try. Okay, always use money that's 
we are supposed to lose. But for the people who are not into it or who are very, you know, who just, you know, they're, they're just too much for, for, for them to handle, then just hold on to Fist, OSK, and Fong. And hold on until October when we launch the public chain. And that's the second reason why we are, they are going to create this Pangea Capital because they want to nurture, you know, real good projects onto FISWAP so it will, they can be um, coming to our own public chain when we launch them, right? Otherwise, even though we have a chain, but if, if we don't have, if we only have FISWAP on that chain, then it's no use. We need a lot of projects. A lot of projects on Facebook, just like Binance. We have a lot of projects on Binance or Ethereum. So, but they are they they are seeing that right now the community leaders who are trying to help OSK or OSK swap using their way, bringing on their projects. Um, it might not be a good project. It might be a short term project. So that's why the developers are decided, okay, so they're gonna find the good ones, nurture the good ones, and then bring them up. For example, um, for the light project and the tomato project, for the people who were in the IDOs, you know, everyone's made money, right? But the people who weren't on the IDOs, they were trading on these project, on, on these token, then they, lo they lost money. For the people who bought the blind boxes on Jockey Club, I've heard because I have, it's there, I heard that everybody have made money. If they sold their horses, they made money or they were playing the game, they made money, right? So these are the three projects that the developers have identified on Twitter. The developers will do changes according to what's, what they think will be the best for the market. Okay, so what happening to what's happening for the farming? Uh, every people are mining fund, selling fund, and back into Fist or US or um, OSK, and then selling that Fist in OSK into USDT. So basically, the fund is draining the Fist USDT pool, right? So and but it's not draining that hard because Fong have their own USD people, right? So some of some will go through the Fong USDT, some will go through Fong to Fist to USDT. So, you know, and uh, a lot of people are are you know giving a lot of um, suggestions on you know how to, how to bring the price of Fong back up, so you know the farming will be more attracting, blah blah blah. Okay, so right now, since the public chain has is the, the, the coding has done, so their first decision is to terminate the farming. So basically, a lot has been burnt. There's very little that's outside. And it will be easier to pull the price up. And when the price is pulled up, they, they can always turn back on the farming again. You know what I'm saying? Because right now it's like three dollars and four dollars, yep. right? But yep. if we can make it back to thirty forty dollars, then if we turn back the, on the mining, then the farming will be more attractive. There will be a fist LUSD, OSK LUSD, and Fond LUSD pool. So it's a partnership with the Light project. And for the people who are LUSD, basically it's just like USDT. It's... So for the people who are who participate or who are providing liquidity for FIST LUSD, OSK LUSD, and FONG LUSD, there will be a mining farm for them to earn LUSD, to earn stable coin. So it's something that uh, they've announced and it will be starting soon. So that is the part where, why we want a lot of projects to come on to this one, because we need to diversify the pools. 
the first USDT, the first OSK pool is too heavy, it's too big. So right now we are not really worried about the first USDT pool because that's what we want to see. Otherwise, it's pretty pretty hard to pull up the price because the pool is too the, the pool is too heavy, too huge. So we are we want to see different projects to diversify the pool. For example, like the the tomato, you no, know, in their pool they, they have five million fists for jock. Right? They had like three, four million fists. So we need projects to diversify these pools. So it will be easier to to um, pull up the price for all three tokens. And it will be better if every token have their own USDT pool. It will be the minimum risk. So that's what the developers want. But um, it's something that they are trying to do for the past three months because last year, the Pan group, the community have been taught that Okay, so we just focus on OSK. We pair out, we pair our OSK with Fist, right? And people from outside will come and buy Fist. It will pull the price of Fist, and our OSK will be affected too. But at the same time, if more people are selling OSK into Fist, and they want to cash out, then they have to sell their OSK into USDT. So it will also go through the Fist pool. It will go up at the same time, but it will go down at the same time. So that's what the developers have been trying to, to, to do, but they're using mechanisms, trying to diversify the pools as quickly as they can, because that is when we are ready for a big run. Is, can you guys understand what, I, <laughs> what I'm trying to say? Uh, please ask me questions if you don't. It's okay. So, um, Paul, this is Carlos. Hey, hey, Carlos. Yeah. So, I so I just wanted to ask, uh, course of action. Of course, we're not giving any any financial advice, but um, is the, when you say mainnet, right? We're gonna have our mainnet um, yep. token, right? Is that still fun, right? Yeah, it's still fun. So, did Fawn just get more valuable because we stopped mining? I think so, right? If we're yep. not mining for free, it just became more valuable. Exactly. So, is this a time that we should be trying to buy Fawn? Uh, I think if we have more extra, I would buy all three. <laughs> Okay, so you still believe in okay. buying? Okay, but, 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 but. Okay, so this, this, this will be my suggestion. If you have first OSK farm, you know, we don't, you're a bit uncertain about the future of everything, it's okay. Hold on to it. You don't need to add more if you don't want to, it's okay. If you have extra money, right? Follow Pangea Capital. For their next move, for their next suggestion, be, because this week there will be a new IDO, a new project. Now be on that IDO, because that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna come out with two, three, four project, and make everybody from Pangu, you know, to in, uh, make sure that they make money from these projects, from these IDOs. And people will have the faith, have their faith back. At the same time, they have good projects that will be coming with us to our own public chain. The new oh, ideas yeah. they will be they will be using FIS, OSK, Fong, USDT, LUSD. You know, there are different tokens that will be will be allowed for the ideals. So they don't have to use the current money for FIS, OSK, and Fong. The developers. The main goal is to bring up the value of these three tokens. That's the main goal. So, you know, on the call that I had with the Chinese, I just told them, uh, if you don't, if you're not, if you're uncertain, just delete the wallet, you know, but remember your private key and then sit there and then reinstall your wallet um, 
in October or December when everything, when the public chain is, is, is up. Then you will then you will know that what's the real value of the first always getting fun. And you and you're just saying that as in go into a coma and leave your stuff alone. That's what you're saying. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Hold on. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Got just it. like you know, if you look at the history of Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's the same thing. But for the people who huddled, <laughs> who people who lost their computer, who lost their hard drive, you know, after a few years, they came back, oh my God, you know, Bitcoin, I'm, I'm now a millionaire. You know, they went out into the rubbish bin or something. They tried to find their hard drive because they've been mining Bitcoin at the beginning, but it was nothing. So, you know, for us, for if we truly believe in the community and the 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 future of it, then to me, it's just holiday, right? People are scared of buying at, at a lower price, which is normal because you know people always want to buy when the price is going up. <laughs> That's why investing, a lot of people, most people are losing lose money in in, in investing and in buying stocks. When the blood is when 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 the blood is on the street, that is when we are going. We should be going in, but that's not for the normal investors. Normal investors they want to see, you know, increase in value, and then they want to chase high. So for me, I don't know when when when's the best time to buy. So for me, you know, I'm a very simple person. I add my positions every month or every week, and I. For example, a hundred dollars a week or a thousand dollars a week. I don't care what the price is, as as long as I believe in this token, then I'm just gonna keep on adding more positions, no matter what the price is. It will eventually average out. Okay, so so right now, well, we still need to diversify the pool. We still need to have more projects on to FISWAP because our public chain is ready rather than letting other community leader to bring in project that might be killing our project, then the developers will find the real good ones, like the ones that they have tweeted out. You know, it's, it, they are very stable. They are doing the works. Like they are very experienced crypto projects, developers created light, tomato or drop. Right, but for the others, you know, there are a lot of it's not very good projects. So in the future, like they are gonna tell people like, okay, this is good, this is not good, this is good, this is not good, because they are going to make sure that all this good, good all the good projects is coming onto FISWAP and then we'll be migrating onto our public chain when we launch them. So when there are more good projects onto FISWAP, meaning it will attract more volume, when there are more volume, more people outside of Pangu coming into these projects, it, they have to come in with this OSK or fund. It will then increase the value of this OSK and fund. All right, so I believe that is uh, the end of that segment of audio. Uh, we'll open up the floor for any comments, thoughts, or questions. Uh, Paul was kind enough on a, uh, you know, on an impromptu request to be able to jump on a call. We had an opportunity to spend some spend a few minutes with him. So those are some snippets from that conversation. And um, just open up the floor for any thoughts, comments, or questions. Carlos, I saw you jumped in. Are you in a place where you can say a few words, Carlos? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we sure can. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> how you doing, guys? Good evening, everyone. Based hey, on, based on the, I mean, I, I'll say first and foremost, his candor and demeanor and his approach to the conversation was just so, at ease, it kind of put me at ease. So his confidence in what, where the developers want to go has me, you know, 
not as worried as I was before not having communication with Paul. So after listening to that, you know, it's, it's long-term. Like if anyone is rattled or shaken by things that are happening right now, then <clears throat> this may not be a long-term investment for you. You know, I think everyone has to, has to, has to really look at the person in the mirror and see if they have their tolerance level at peak, you know? Um, I'm too deep to leave. That's what I feel. I feel like I've been here for a very long time. Um, not that I want to leave, but first of all, I'm too deep to leave. I'm not going to sell any of my assets at this point. Um, you know, OSK was at $10 before. So, you know, I still feel like as soon as they find something to do with OSK, then we might be looking at something that that would be profitable for me to stay as long as I've stayed in this project. Um, <clears throat> I know it seems like we've been in here a very long time, but in crypto years, you know, it's like dog years, right? Like we're, you know, if it's, you know, six months, it feels like two years. The volatility and the constant checking of our assets and the constant movement of, you know, different coins because we we entered a different portal or we are mining or we're staking and all these steps, you know? Um, you learn all this stuff and it, it, it takes a toll on your brain um, and it takes a little time to catch up and for it to be normal. And then for it not to be normal, right? Like right now, there's, I'm not taking any any fawn out, right? I'm so used to waiting a couple of days and taking fawn out and then changing it and compounding. You know, we had a, a beautiful sense of direction and now we're just waiting, right? So I feel besides the horse, if I didn't have the horse, I, I wouldn't even look at my wallet for a while and it would just, it would just actually give me peace of mind to, to zoom out. <clears throat> I can't zoom out right now because I have to feed the horse and, and I'm in a, I'm in a different, um, you know, I'm, I'm taking care of the NFT and the game fine. But other than that, um, I don't know, like, I feel, I feel more, way more confident that he, he came and talked to us and, um, yeah, those are my thoughts. My thoughts are are back with um, with confidence, you know? So this has always been a long-term, you know, move for me anyway. So I'm like, I wasn't even, I wasn't looking for any price action until January. So I'm not disappointed in the price action. You know, that's my take on it. Like I'm, I'm looking for something January. I think every, every, January or every Chinese New Year, something some, something special happens, right? So that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for Chinese New Year. Um, in the meantime, in between time, I'm I'm just here to learn. I'm here to learn, and I'm here to you know enjoy this this discipline and and this volatility. You know, it's like you, you got to enjoy the ride. You know, so that's it. That's my take. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Carlos, I have a question for you. Yeah. Yeah, for a couple minutes. And I appreciate you jumping in. You you're in a you're into other stuff. Are the projects, NFT things, and what's your what's your general sense of like just where people and their feelings are considering what's happening in the broader market? You know, there's always going to be a special project or two that'll go to the moon. Um, and you know, that's no one can predict that. It's like, it's like chase. It's like a dog chasing its tail. It's like, it's, it's, it's almost never going to happen. Um, so you try to surround yourself by community and people who are, you know, going in the same direction. Right. I will tell you about something that I missed out on literally by by like 
I don't know, like like two seconds. It was just too. It was a it was a thought process that went through my head, and I said, I don't even want to argue with my wife. This is exactly this is what happened. I'm gonna be a completely honest. This happened yesterday. I've been waiting for a launch of these. I know it sounds really silly, but these Rugrats Nickelodeon was was um, launching a, some Rugrats, and I miss what we call the ICO, right? Because there was an initial coin offering, right? So there was there was a, a NI, the NFT blind box. And you had to get in it at a certain time. Afterwards, it would go to the public. But I already was in the know. But I missed that window. So when I went to go buy it, it was 50 bucks. And when I went to go buy it, I didn't buy it. So then it came into the general market. So now it's on the market. And guys were like thinking short term. Like this is, this is, a, I'm, this is a lesson in itself. So I'm going to just, I'm, I'm going to finish this whole thing. And you could, you could see how how this is a lesson that I learned yesterday. So I knew that anybody selling, anybody that, that was supposed to, anybody that paid $50 that was willing to take $75, they don't have a clue. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna scoop up, you know, two of them at $75 each, I'll pay 150 bucks and I'll wait to see. And as I was gonna go on my credit card, I had a conversation with my wife. She told me my credit card is at 7,000. I know I'm getting really personal here, but it is what it is. So I was like, man, between my NFTs and the cab rides that I take to all these poker games, she's like, yeah, you're at seven grand, just giving you a heads up. And I'm like, oh God, I'm not even gonna buy another NFT. She's gonna kill me. We had the NFT conversation. So I skipped it. I did not pay the $75 each. Those things right now, I'm gonna look at it right now. Those NFTs, the last time I saw them were at five hundred dollars each, <laughs> and it's too late. Like I'm not gonna buy them now. Like it's like so it's Nickelodeon NFTs, and here's the floor. The floor is five five ninety. So I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. I'm like, I missed it. I missed the boat. It's all good. Next time I'm pull the trigger. And it is what it is. But. The lesson there is there's a whole bunch of people that were willing to give up um, their $50 NFT for um, a half, like, uh, like a half an X, right? Like not even a whole X. They went 75 bucks. So you gave it up. And I know they're kicking themselves for selling that for 75 bucks because the floor right now is a, like, you know, 500 plus. So that right there just tells you, you have to wait. Sometimes you really have to wait. Um, this, this, this thing moves fast. This, you know, the sentiment of, of, of the market, the sentiment of a project, you know, I, I know it doesn't help for the developers, the developers to say, we have a seven year project and we haven't even made seven months of this project. So I know that that deflates you that that makes you just like oh my word it's like an, another project gone south right but when you see guys regroup and you see the developers haven't left and you see that it's not a scam and you see that they were doing you know it is what it is they would i feel like there was some trial and error going on but that's what this whole space is this whole space is trial and error right now Mark Zuckerberg took a giant gamble on making Facebook meta. He went all in on that. And now what we're seeing is there's going to be a whole bunch of different metaverses. If they don't have interoperability, and interoperability is basically they need to talk to each other. They need to play well together. So these softwares need to play well together. So if I have a metaverse at Sandbox and I have a metaverse in Decentraland and I have a metaverse at Microsoft and then Mark Zuckerberg has, has his metaverse and they don't talk to each other, we're all just gonna stay with our own NFTs and it's not gonna 
So I, I feel that there's going to be a company that's going to come out that's going to be like, look, we're not Zuckerberg, we're not Microsoft, but we're the ones who made this compatible, a compatible universe for everyone. So even a, 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 a company like Facebook took a gamble on metaverse. Do you say, I'm going to take all my stocks out of meta, out of, out of meta now. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to believe in Facebook anymore. I'm out of here. You know, they, they messed up. You, that's not what you do. That's not how it works out. You know, you just, you wait to see if they could somehow or another find a way to break through. This is, this is all it. Like, it's, like all, it's like China, Russia, and America trying to go to the moon for the first time. Who gets there first? You know, so we're in that stage where who's going to break through with Metaverse? Who's going to who's going to have the the legit GameFi game and who's going to have the best NFT universe, you know? So I'm excited. I'm excited to be in the space. I'm excited to be losing a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand in, on this because I already knew that the cardinal rule is don't put anything in the middle. You can't afford to lose. Literally. So I got about seven grand in this. If I lose a seven grand, I lose seven grand, right? And, and, I, had, and I had a learning experience. Um, but I'm, again, I'm not giving up my, on my assets. I'm waiting. You know, sometimes the best move is no move at all. Just have to wait. You know, a lot of times, you know, I work in Times Square. And there's times when, you know, you're, you're walking with a pack of people, maybe, maybe, a family and, and you have like eight people and someone gets lost and now you start looking around Times Square. You go from 42nd to 43rd, from 44th to 40th. And, and it's like, no, just stay where you were and you'll see them past you again. It just happens. It's like, don't move around because you're chasing your tail. And I feel the same thing in crypto. You know, one week is Polkadot, the next week is Ethereum, the next, you can't keep kicking yourself because you you missed a project or you missed something or you sold too soon or you or you held on too long it's part of the process so you have to enjoy the process be mad at no one but yourself for doing the, you have to do your research you know <clears throat> Paul or no one else said hey give me give me all your private keys and all your assets and I'm going to move them around when I have to move them don't worry about anything just just sit here and wait for the pro the profits like that's not happening, <clears throat> you know. I, I always teach. I have a, a, a I teach seminars uh, for young people that are getting new jobs, and I always tell them, first of all, congratulations to all of you that are in this room. Thank you for you know. We I get twenty five applicants a day, which is over over two hundred people a week, right? And I and there's twenty two people in this classroom now. You've been chosen, right? And I go. By show of hands, show me where the free money is at. Raise your hand if you can get a job where you don't have to do anything. Because if there's that job, I want to I want to be there. And you guys owe it to me to tell me about it too. Like, don't keep a secret. Where's the, the place where they pay you to do nothing? And they all look at each other and they're like, yeah, there is no place, right? So we're here to work. And, you know, I, I shoot from the hip with them and I kind of tell them, like, there's nothing for free and there's nothing easy. And it's the same thing here. This is not, we're going to pick a coin and it's going to go to a million. There's work to do. There's work to do in bringing people in this community. There's work to do in, in doing your research and making sure that the tokenomics are correct. And there's, you know, and then there's, there's things like this where a developer de decides that well, they let too many people into the ecosystem and they're not going to do that anymore because uh, people went, and sold their fawn to, to um, how do you say, to back their project. So if they were, if they were mining for, for sheep or they were mining for Ethereum, they just bought more Ethereum and more sheep. That doesn't help us, right? Um, maybe it helps us a tiny little bit in the transaction fees when we're in the AMA, but I mean, the, um, the auto market maker. But other than that, um, I'm, I'm talking a whole lot here, guys. I apologize, but um, 
those are my feelings on the project. That's my feeling on crypto. I think we're early. I think you should not be here if you can't afford to lose a couple of hundred um, or, you know, use or, or to lose your entire um, investment. If you came in here and you lose, I've, I've been in things where I've lost, I've lost 1500 and I'm like, damn, I, I just had 1500 for that project. I lost it. Let me concentrate on this next project. And then I lose 500. And then I'm like, okay, that didn't work out. Let me try this out. But I, I don't feel that way with OSK Fist because I've, I've had it for a very long time. Let me not say very long time, but in, in crypto years, right? I've had it for, um, for the year and, and, and some odd months and I've made money. Like I've made money. I, I haven't really made um, as much money as I have in any other projects, but I've cashed out here plenty. I've cashed out Fawn. I've cashed out OSK when it was up. I cashed out Fist. So <clears throat> I'm not too happy that the NFT value is down right now and that an entire community is divided and we can't do anything right now until that community chooses to do what they do. But hey, all we can do is wait, you know? So thank you guys. Thank you, Carlos. Appreciate your candor. Your uh, your a very cool story about the NFTs. I know you're uh, you're always out there looking at stuff, and uh, it also you know it it reminds us of an opportunity as this project evolves. We talk about you know being at an ICO or an IDO, being able to buy buy a coin at launch, and and this is part of the opportunity that you know we're going to be looking forward to exploring here with this swap. Smart bit. See your hand up. You should be able to unmute yourself. Come on in. Hey, David. How are you? Good, man. Yes. Uh, hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, so, uh, I think so. Paul is here. I am. Uh, uh, Paul knew me. Uh, Paul knows me very well. I'm Riyad Udin. Uh, my smart beat is my uh, Zoom ID. So I am with this okay. uh, project uh, from long time. Uh, David, you know, uh, Mahabub is the best friend of mine. Maybe from yes. Mahabub, you yes. <laughs> listen to my name. Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> yes. Uh, so it makes long time I'm listening, but I have some uh, questions because I am very active member in OSK community, especially Pengu community. I have a uh, lot of uh, hope, a lot of confusion too right now. Uh, I, I especially several times talk with Paul. Paul also very nice uh, guy. But some of the point, some of uh, the information uh, from the development side, their word and their delivery, their uh, commitment and their word, I don't feel uh, similar right now because of we are everybody maximum, not only maximum, I think so 99% people is from OSK community, usually Pengo community. When we introduced this uh, Pengo community, that time we got the OSK, not even fist. So everybody had OSK. Some people right now sell it, that's why they lose it. Or when this community we uh, entered like uh, with OSK, uh, liquidity pool, then you get the PZ NFT. So everybody had OSK. So if right now the community is divided, lots of rumor, lot of uh, you know, things is happening here. We are very much confused. Who is the real one? Who is the uh, uh, fake one? Whose community is uh, really true? And also why I am little confused, not only little, too much uh, disappointed right now because of when OSK declared that it's going to be $1,000 is already uh, uh, February 25th, 2020, is went like $805. But if any coin from $805 fall down, like uh, again, $15 is definitely disappointing for everybody and our community especially too. So I invest, me and Mabu, I can... Uh, told you, I can tell you everybody, $70,000 I invest because I believe this community. That time, when Oscar price was around seven, uh, like uh, 10 to 15 bucks. 
Mr. Mahbub also invest 80,000 bucks. And we believe this community too. But we are uh, taking passion. A lot of things ha already happened. But right now, who are the behind our project? The fish swap. Yesterday I saw in Twitter, in fish swap, the fish swap tweet, they told us right now, after a long period of time, they tweet, OSK ecology is not fish swap ecology. What the ecology they try to learn us. So what happened to OSK? Because we are the OSK community. We are not the a fish swap community. Fish swap ecology say like that. If OSK doesn't have real utility, because in the past, when we entered the OSK community, that time, it has real utility. Suppose fish, uh, OSK will be used for movie. It will be for several uh, drama and it, it will be for the movie industry all over the world. And they was trying to do some movies. They are funding also by OSK, seven OSK, one a movie NFT, everybody we bought. But this community, this uh, development team doesn't ha have that real plan how the OSK will be, you know, price will be up, what the behind right now this OSK community, because other communities, PZ chain, they are coming again with the Tron OSK, some OSK in the Tron, some OSK in uh, Binance Smart Chain. So a lot of confusion is happening. My question is why the development team doesn't come in front, doesn't focus up, why always, we are getting information from only Paul, some other people, Max, he's, as I know, Max also as like, as a member, he's not the part of development team. Paul is developing with the uh, project, like bring a lot of projects in the fish swap community. So what our benefit, we are entered with the OSK, we are entered the fish, we have the PZNFT. Why we will go, Again and again, we we are the um, put my liquid uh, put money in liquidity pool, and we get the fund token. They said it will be seven years uh, mining. Suddenly they close it, even though they didn't notice it. Right now I cannot pull out my money from liquidity pool like uh, fist uh, USDT. Every uh, pool we can uh, hold it uh, like uh, getting out, but fist. USDT pool, we cannot getting out. So a lot of confusion, a lot of uh, disappointing happen here. So they are not focusing the development team. Again, right now say, if we put the liquidity pool, we can participate IDO. Why we will put IDO? Why not the, uh, the developer focus on our three coin? How is real value, real utility? behind that and then you can increase the price you cannot increase the price this way several projects you will bring it maximum people doesn't interested they doesn't interested light they doesn't interested tomato how many people participate in IDO in tomato if you saw in the behind it's a several people maximum people doesn't interest so when you will be real utility behind the waste case, bring uh, real movie, bring uh, movie industries, a lot of people, if you integrate here, so OSK price will be up. Otherwise, there is no way, there is no way you cannot put your OSK price up. Only the fish swap community, fish swap developer become a richer and richer. This our community people who have OSK, who have fish, who have also get some fund, who has PZ energy, never gonna be that much high because how long will the time is money? We cannot stay here for long. When we go to WSK uh, uh, community, that time they are announcing WSK will be uh, within one year, $1,000. That's why some people come here. And a lot of people know about the DeFi. This is not a, a rocket science that every time in the Zoom call, debate, all other leaders uh, educate people day by day, day after day. A lot of people knows that. Everybody have idea. Nobody is here ignorant. Nobody is here illiterate. Everybody already got it. What the focus? 
but also they understood last meeting Gino asking several question Max cannot give the proper answer I was laughing and I was upset because of Max is not part of the development team if developer doesn't come if developer doesn't put the focus on three coin why I will stay uh, fish swap I have a lot of fish swap lots of swap is one swap making is not too high good uh, hard 300 thousand to 500,000 easily you can every anyone can make a, a building a one swap but the question is how they will success so you I, I'm, we are gonna, working I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna jump in here and I'm going to jump in and ask if I, I, I appreciate you and I want to give you the opportunity to, to share your thoughts. At the same time, I, I also want to respect the fact that right now you're preaching to the choir, right? So if, if, we're going to, if we're going to gather together on a call like this, then yes, it's important that we express our concerns and frustrations, but let's not beat up the project because that's not doing any of, it, any of us any good. Part of the challenge the project has is that people are making baseless claims about things that are or are not happening. And that's natural for what happens in an environment like this. The market is down, people are in fear, uncertainty. The, the, the project is a, is a massive, is in the middle of a massive transition. Not everything has gone smoothly. And so I appreciate your perspective. I, and, and, the, and I'm only saying all of this because I'm cutting you off because I just, I, I get it, you're frustrated. I think we all understand that. We've all experienced our frustrations. But if we are going to build this project, and one of the ways that we build this project is to bring people to a call like this, we're going to just turn people off. And so we, sh we have to find a way to talk about the project and the things that we'd like to see happen without taking a sledgehammer to it in the very environment in which we need to grow in order to protect our own investments. Crazy yes, yes, you are right. You are right. But sometimes if every time you uh, same thought, we are standing on the same thought. So you cannot get the better result. Sometimes you have to get the negative thought too. Why is going to be happen? What happened? So you see one thing, they make a note. Yes, note. I appreciate it. Note. Why the font price is down? Note is the one of the reason. You know a lot of things. Every, I told you, I respect everybody and every person have a different uh, thought and they have knowledge too. When you make a note, like 37 note, 18% fund mining fund going to like note. So 37 people, 37 note, every day, like 300,000 fund was mining. As I know, is many maybe less or more. I don't know the exact, exact value. Every day it was mined like 300,000 uh, 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 yeah, font. So 18% is almost like 54,000 font goes to the node. The node people immediately get the free uh, coin. They sell it immediately. If you sell it, you cannot uh, increase the price. It's going to be uh, down because of everybody was liquidity pool. The OSK fish liquidity pool was big. OSK uh, fish USDT liquidity was big, but why font price go down? You have to find out, you have to diagnose why the price going down, not only market. When the OSK price was $800, that time every market was down. The February 20 Bitcoin price was $27,000. From $50,000, it was. I appreciate you. I just, I, I want to give the floor to someone else at this point. Thank you for your thoughts. Breezy, come on in. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, just to address a couple of the things that were said, I don't know or don't don't think that you guys understand where we came from and what the map roadmap to this project was. When Paul brought this to us, he informed us that they had started with Rev, not important. Then they went to FIST. FIST was mining for OSK. That's where we came in when OSK was being sold. At that time, we were mining OSK to get the PGNLZs, to get the NFT card, um, and so on and so forth. We had a clear roadmap from the beginning that OSK and FIST was going to come back after OSK. And after FIST, we we're going to plan for the FIST swap, which was supposed to be launched in 2022 and was launched December 2021. This was in the roadmap. 
This was from the beginning what the roadmap was. OSK is not gone. We're not finished with OSK. Our three main tokens are FIST OSK. And once we were in the FIST swap, the plan was to mine for FAWN so that we can have that governance token for the blockchain, FAWNVITY. This has been a roadmap the whole time. We were supposed to leave Tron and go to the BSC wallet, check. We were supposed to have OSK mining for PGNLZ, making the PGNFT, check. We got the fist swap in December, check. We had some issues in February, but we're not gonna really revisit that right now. And as you said, the font price went down and I'm not gonna say it to the nodes, People were selling it, and that is why they said, let us recoup, let us go back to the drawing board and find out how we're going to get these prices back up. Regardless of if it's the market or whatever the case, which does play a factor as well, not just in centralized, not just in DeFi, the dollar value is down, market, um, stock markets are down, everything is down right now. But we got information and you heard it from the vo from Paul himself about what they're trying to do with this project to get the prices to come back up. This was the roadmap the entire time. And this is what we had a discussion about earlier. We're here for the long run and that is what we're here to do. The roadmap was set out clearly. And now because we moved from OS from Tron to BSC, there, there are people who are trying to revive the OSK in the Tron side. If it works, perfect. If it doesn't, it's just multiple projects are being pulled from what we're doing in fist swap. But that was the original roadmap that we had from Mr. Moda when he was visible. Whatever transpired to where we're at now, we are working towards the goal that we had from the beginning. And that's what I want people to pay attention to because this isn't out the blue that we're in fist swap. This was on the roadmap and we're here now. If this is not for you because you have lost faith or never really had it to stick in it, you do not have to stay. You can remove it from the liquidity pool. You can move it from farming. There's a little trick because of USDT fist in the mining that caused FRT to be, um, gifted to you. So for anyone who didn't put it into the node, you're going to have to buy the equal amount of FRT in order for you to remove it from the mining. All of the mining can be removed. A couple of people are having a couple of glitches not being able to get into fist swap, but this isn't being held from you. Your funds are not being taken from you. And I understand people who have come with a large amount it's gonna come back just not as quickly as it did when we had the drop from the 800 thinking it's gonna go to a thousand. As much as we, they've preached of how high the price was gonna go, Paul himself said, that's not a guarantee. Hence the reason why people were still holding on to waiting for that thousand dollar mark instead of you know, at least getting back what they put in. These are decisions that each of us did on our own and the research that we brought forward and what you put into it and the knowledge you got out of it is what you decided to go with. This isn't pushing blame on anybody else because we're individual people that make the decisions that we make. Again, no one asked for your private key and said, I'm gonna force you to stay in this. The roadmap was clear from the time that Paul introduced us to this project and it grew to where it grew now. And I just wanted to emphasize that again, because fist swap is not out the blue. It was planned out and that is where we're at now. I still have complete faith in this. And yes, even when we are um, excited in a good or bad way, Paul brings us the information we need via it be through Max or through us. And that is what you heard today. So with that being said, there was probably more, but I kind of got lost in my thoughts. So Kaywell, if you want to come in or if David or anybody else want to say anything else about that. Just let me check with Marlene. Marlene, I see that you're unmuted. Did, did you want to come in? No, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it's all right. All right, Kaywell. 
Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I just uh, so I just logged in about a couple of minutes ago, so I'm not sure what happened in the beginning. Um, but one of the things that I think uh, I think we can all identify there is a problem. The problem is that um, the lack of clarity or the lack of or there's a wall between us and the developers. And and I, and I think one thing that would really bode well is to can we get the developers somebody actually from the team from the fish swap development team whatever whoever they are because in the past we had moda he was the face and so forth and then the, whatever the group of six and and since for whatever reason that's not available so i think in order for the, the, um i think the people are lacking confidence now going forward and they're trying to scratch their head okay which way do i go do i go over here or do i go over there do i hold uh if i hold uh, whatever it's going to go down or further or it might erode my funds away so i don't know if uh david or you guys can maybe um whatever um uh, not strong arm but but talk to the uh other through paul but i would say it, it'd be nice to get a direct line on a zoom with a meeting with the current fist uh swap developers and actually get their take on what's happening rather than being relayed from person to person to person and then we're getting information um so i, I think that's what I'm kind of gathering in the last couple of days, that people are feeling disfranchised, that they've been pushed away somehow. And that was maybe not the intent of the project, but that's what's happened because of the market drop and, uh, and other factors that are out there. So if there's a problem, uh, which I'm identifying as, you know what, just the uh, lack of communication, um, and directly with the developers, let's get the developers out here and, and you know, on the Zoom call, um and and so forth and that there might be a language barrier but but paul's been able to translate in, in the past um but i would actually like to hear directly from the developers on this and i guess that that's just my take to get my confidence back in because my confidence is shaken and uh, earlier on we mentioned hey the, the the what we're asking for clarity actually has a value on it for some people it's only hundred dollars for other people it might be tens and like the other fellow was saying hey some are into maybe eighty thousand dollars uh, uh in, like into this project so so i think we owe it to all of us uh to be able to you know get the developers in front of us thank you thank you i'll I, i'll uh i'll say this i don't have a uh bat line to the developers so um none of us on on this call do and we made this request i think we've articulated our desire to have uh more direct line of communication with the development team some crypto projects you'll find that developers are very visible and some that you'll find that they're not and it's one of the questions you've got to ask about you know how comfortable you are in any particular project um you know it's i, I was listening to breezy talk about where we come from and you know most of us i think most of us on the call today were here from early Pangu days. And there was a period of maybe almost three months where we didn't talk to anybody from China and Paul was gone. Maybe not quite three months, but there was a long stretch of period. Paul was on a religious journey and he was out of touch for, for a while. And I remember some of the frustration around that period of time. So the reality of this project has always been that the vast majority of the community doesn't speak our primary language and exist on the other side of the world. And part of what we're doing here is tagging on to the momentum and the success of that community. And I want to talk about, um, I want to pull something up here real quick. Yeah, that Breezy was talking about. So when we talk about, just we go back and think about where we've been. This was the original slide deck that Paul showed us. And uh, it's a little blast from the past. So we talked about, we ended the presentation with this slide and we talked about the future of Pangu community. And of course, this was during 2021. So our first objective was uh, we're going to build a community to a million. And of course, we all know that that hasn't quite happened, at least not in a quantifiable way. But we set a goal and that goal was a million. And that setting that goal inspired the community to work towards doing something. And very much like we set a goal for a million, we set a goal for, for a target for price action around the coins. And 
that goal set the community in a tr in a particular direction. And then the roadmap took us into 2022 to launch the blockchain index, and then into years beyond that, multi launching multiple egos ecosystems. So we're 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 on that roadmap. I found something though that I thought was interesting, and this is uh, an important part of what what in what uh, made us fall in love with the Pengu story was the success the community had seen with Fist, and we heard a lot of people talk about how uh, you know they missed the opportunity with Fist. Paul had his story. We heard from Adam, who had his story about how he just he didn't quite understand what Pengu was all about and how uh, this community was all excited around this FIST token and what they had done, taking it from $50 to $8,000 all time high. Well, I want us to think about something for a second, do a little bit of, a little bit of math. $8,000 high, the story of Pangu, for me, part of the, the, the thing that closes the deal is this community took the token from $50 to $8,000. And even today it was still trading at that time, it was still trading between two and $4,000. This was the story that we heard. And for many of us, the reason why we felt confidence in moving forward into this project. Well, that $8,000 was the value pre, uh, prior to the 20,000 times split. So on Tron Network, $8,000 prior to the 20,000 times split would be the equivalent of today, 40 cents on Binance Smart Chain. So the story that we got excited about that this token went to $8,000 today has a greater value than even the all time high that we saw then. And of course we've seen FIS do phenomenal things and go to the moon and beyond. But again, I think perspective, I, I, as I was scrolling through this, I found that interesting. And just as I step back and I think about the perspective of time and cycles and experience. Hey Val, I appreciate your uh, your your desires certainly it's been communi communicated. I think we would all prefer greater level of uh, communication. But I think the question we all have to ask ourselves is: if we don't get what we think we have to have, does it? What, what's what's my next course of action? And as Breezy said, everybody's free to make the decision that you feel most comfortable with. I think that one of the things that I would love for our community to take away is that it's easy to, to convince ourselves that a lot of things have changed and a lot of things have changed. That's natural as things evolve and they grow and the, the community tries to figure out who it is, how to organize all of these people. So a lot of things have changed, but at the core of what this project is, is about, we're still executing against the roadmap that we were told about. We're, we're, we're moving in a direction in the middle of a market is, that is really, really struggling. We're moving in a, in a direction, developers are working with the intent of building a healthy ecosystem and a healthy economy so that the next step that we take into our own blockchain provides success for us as well. Guys, at the end of the day, I, I really want us to decide that we're here or we're not here so that when we join together we're talking about solutions. We're talking about how we grow the community. There, there's always gonna be frustration. There's always gonna be things that we wish to be different. And some of those things we're gonna be able to push for, we're gonna be able to voice our concerns and, and make change. And some of those things we just aren't. And we've, got, we've all got to make a decision for ourselves what our tolerance level with that is. And if it's beyond your tolerance level, it's okay. The gazillion projects out here. Carlos told us some great stories about uh, some of the things that he's involved in. But let's, I, I would really like to bring us back to a place where when we come on these calls, we are uh, creating an environment and atmosphere where we can introduce other people and we can talk about all the wonderful things that are happening and that are being planned for this project. If you don't believe that they are, and, and, and then it probably doesn't make sense to be here. But I think for all of us, we, we're here, we're committed. We love this project. We love the potential, the community, the, the story that we've been told, the story that we're telling. So let's lock arms and figure out how we build it better together. Frank, come on in. Oh, I can speak. Oh, wonderful. I completely agree. It should be. Uh, 
no attacking. We just, uh, you need to be able to bring people new so they can participate in financial wealth. And it's all about getting us back to where we were. You know, it was all about financial freedom, passive income for all and bringing our members to participate in that. And I've been here from the beginning, so I know where we came from. And I just wanted to get us back to it. And we came from movies, NFTs. We came from liquidity pools. And right now, since David and I, you and I from the car world, we just asked everybody to take the test drive and see which one works out best for you. And I've heard the six month plan. And I've heard Carlos talk about the six month plan. And I'm just sharing with you softly, you know, here's a test drive, what's it, what you're gonna be doing in six months. In that six months, I'll be earning a movie from an NFT movie that will be in the theaters. In the next six months, I'll be learning how to build a DAP. In the next six months, I'll learn how to write my own smart contract. In the next six months, I will learn how to write my own NFT token. In the next six months, I'll learn how to produce my own ICO, all on where we came from. The original creators have created this for us. OSK is the settlement token for all movies all NFTs. And I'm just saying, come get back what belongs to you. Take the test drive and see which one is better. No one is wrong. We, we, we've been hand, handling a bill of goods. And I think we all deserve financial freedom. We all deserve wealth. I mean, everybody. And my love goes out for everyone. And I don't care which one does it. If it's wealthy or good, I'm just finding the truth. And I know my census cards were financial freedom. I had to get those back. And I found them. And I just want everybody to get theirs back too. That's all. Thank you, Frank. So let me just address Frank's comments so, so that we can uh, we can just address it. So many of you know that there is another community. There are many other communities, but there's a larger community, one of the larger communities, OSK DAO, that was once on FISWAP, that is no longer on FISWAP. And nearly $100 million is going out of FISWAP as a result of this, this community. It has a vision and an idea about what the next step for Pangu should be. And that's natural in communities, in any community that as it grows, there will be leaders from within that community that have different ideas. And that's part of what we're facing in this community. And it is impacting the economy of that community. Uh, Frank has some ideas and believes that there is a, another project that is not this swap, that is a better execution of the ideas of Pangu. Listen, guys, there's lots and lots of folks that have ideas. I just want to be clear that what we're doing right here uh, on this call and in this particular community is we are invested in this one and we support the ideas. Doesn't mean that you can't do something else. In fact, we encourage you to diversify, consider what else is out there. Hopefully your investment, your involvement in this community gives you the confidence and the courage to go out and try different things. But I do think it's also important that we understand and appreciate that we can build different projects. We can go different directions and we can do it and be supportive of one another. And as long as we're doing that, and everybody wins. We get to learn together. We get to earn together. Hopefully this particular community and this particular project goes through a nice healing process where the different directions of the community figure themselves out in a way that doesn't eat us from the inside because literally it's our money that that we're eating um so i hope that that process happens uh, but guys at the end of the day uh, the project that we're involved in here needs our love and our support and yes I, listen I, I see the questions maxine you want to you want paul to be on the call I, I don't control paul's schedule or his time but i'm here and we're here and so we we've got to do the best that we can with what we've got i can't force paul to come here i can't force the developers to come here it's not my project i'm an investor just like everybody else is. i just choose to show up and do the best that i can to help as many people as possible so yeah i mean there's things that i want to have happen from from the unique standpoint that i'm in there's definitely levels of of things that i that i would like to have happen and then i have to make a decision if i if i do or don't get those things I, just, I can decide not to show up. I can decide to keep going. And every one of us gets to make that decision. And I just want to encourage those of you who've decided to keep going to figure out how we can keep going together. How can we can contribute? How can we contribute? How can we make this a bigger, better community? How can we make this more successful? How do we learn what the next phase of this project is all about? How do we learn how to best take advantage of the next phase of this project? Is that IDOs? Is that bringing develop, developers and projects to the community? Let's, let's figure out what that is 
uh, let's let's really focus on what we can control and the things that we can do that will impact the success of our community. A lot of stuff that we can talk about that we can't control, we can't even influence it. And so for me, it just feels like it's kind of a waste of energy because we're just, excuse the term, we're pissing in the wind. And so I'd prefer not to do that. I'd prefer to get together, get excited about the project that my money's in, that my family's money's in, my kids are invested in this project, my personal time is invested in this project. I want to figure out how we can create an environment, a community that wins. So yes, there's going to be things, especially in a down market that just suck. They feel like they suck. They take the wind out of you. They take a left turn. You didn't see it coming. All of that happens in crypto. It's not unique to this project. No matter what somebody tells you, it's not just this project. It happens in crypto. And so we're learning. We're learning to hug the, hug the corners. We're learning to have a, a, a tough stomach. We're learning to ask different questions. And so I appreciate being on this journey with you guys. I appreciate the process. I appreciate all of you that continue to show up and uh, go through this process together. Guys, I want to learn with you. I hope you're learning. You're enjoying the process. But I really want us to look to a future and envision a future that looks just like the roadmap that we saw a year ago. Is, let's just go back to that. We, we were told the story. We fell in love with that story and really very little has changed. We've seen the OSK shoot to the moon. We've seen this shoot to the moon. Some of us took great profits in that process. Some of us didn't. It's okay, it's all part of the process. We decided that we wanted to be a part of this project because of what it could ultimately become, not because of what it could become in the next six months. Maybe some of us did because we heard OSK could be 100, heard OSK could be 1,000. We fell a little bit short of those goals. We blew past 100. Guys, hopefully you're here for the long term. And if you're here for the long term, then what we're building really, really matters. Building a successful DEX really, really matters because it's the foundation for the economy that will fuel our own blockchain. And just a note from what Paul talked about, one of the things that I'm personally excited about is, if, is the foundation that the developers are working on to be an incubator for projects. Finance, Smart Chain has an incubator that supports and promotes projects, invest in those projects. And PancakeSwap, which we've talked about a few times, is a beneficiary of that. And so taking the proactive approach of looking, looking for and investing in and supporting good projects is something that I'm looking forward to, that the project is committed to. Guys, there's lots of answers that we don't have. I don't feel any differently than you do about that. I just choose that we're gonna focus on what we can do to help build this project to be the best thing for all of us and all of our families, since that's where our money is and that's where our heart is. All right, guys, it is 20 minutes after the top of the hour. Any questions or comments before we call it a night? All right, appreciate you guys. Tomorrow is uh, Thursday, Thursday, 12 noon. Join us again. Carlos with some crypto education. Carlos is off call. Carlos, thank you again for being and sharing with us everybody else who had some thoughts to share tonight thank you guys appreciate all of you who showed up tonight to hang out with us hopefully you'll see you again on tomorrow's call or next week monday thank you and have a good night